just got off work and um, while I was at work, it was really slow to start and, and um, business picked up. And while I was at work, uh, the Lord gave me something to speak about. And um, <clears throat> you will need your King James Bible, the real Bible, of course. Let's pray. Come on. Let's pray. Lord, um, thank you for this day. Lord, I, I, I'm incapable of doing anything without you. We all are, Lord. And um, these are the beginning of sorrows, Lord. Um, and you can come at any time for each and every one of us, brethren and sisters who love you, believe the word that you have given us, the King James Bible, the real Bible, and... Um, Lord, in these days, we need to pray for one another and um, truly, not this sappy, uh, pat you on the back, bro hug love stuff. No, no, no. True love is according to your word, the King James Bible, the real Bible, Lord. And um, Lord, there are so many of the brethren who, um, who need you. We, we all need you, Lord, and um, please strengthen us. Answer our prayers for one another, Lord. Uh, bless the brethren. Bless our sisters. And Lord, um, get me out of the way. Uh, you, uh, you put something on me right now, and um, Lord, I, I want to be meet for your use my Father, Lord Jesus Christ, and um, <laughs> please guide me through this. Speak to um, your congregation. Um, bless, this, um, bless this moment, Lord. I, I can't do this. I love you, Lord. I need you. Um, we all need you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Make sure y'all uh, check out Brother Bob's um, live stream. I'm sure it's going to be uh, really good. Uh, Brother Bob, uh, I know you really don't watch um, long, long, long videos. This might be a long video, Brother Um I will not be joining you tonight because I am going to be going to bed. I got some things I got to um, to uh, tend to around here, but you know I'm praying for you. I just hope the Lord opens the floodgates and uh, brings the brethren um, together on your channel. Uh, Lord bless Brother Bob's live stream tonight. Bless the brethren who will be there. Uh, where two or more are gathered in your name, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, you're you're there. Um, I mean, we all have a kindred spirit, one with another, with your spirit, Lord Jesus Christ, Father. In Jesus' name. I also, uh, unfortunately, found out that Brother Matthew McVehe, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing his name, his channel got taken down. He was uploading uh, wonderful sermons from Peter Ruckman and the modern Ruckmanites who are just brutal and get channels shut down when uh, they share anything uh, from Peter Ruckman. Brother Matthew, you seen me? You got my email. Get a hold of me. Come on, brother, get a hold of me. Don't sit there. Don't sit there. Just speak to the Lord, brother. He's listening. He's there with you. And if you want another brother to talk to, okay, any of you, any of you, and I got to warn you, uh, enemies of mine, 
Uh, you send me any more perverse emails, okay? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to read your email on the uh, on YouTube here, and I'm going to expose you, okay? So, also make sure you uh, check out Brother Alexander Hartley. What a wow, wow. A true proclaimer of God's word. Get your King James Bible. The real Bible. I expect you to go there in the scriptures that we're going to be looking at. Don't just sit there on your duff. Get the book. Turn in the Bible with me, okay? Uh, if you want to call this a Bible study, you can. Uh, I don't do sermons. Um, I don't do the, those things. Um, if you want to call them that, that's fine. That's up to you. Uh, we got we got some things we're going to be looking at. <clears throat> but I want to open in uh, Proverbs chapter 29. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs, check, go there. Go there in the scriptures, the King James Bible, the real Bible. Don't mess around, okay? I love you. Go there. Proverbs chapter 29. Verse 25. Proverbs 29, verse 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Go to Job, Job chapter 28, and I, I got to thank uh, Brother Brian for this, uh, so, um, because he, uh, one of his older um, sermons that he did for Bible Believers Fellowship, so he said, and quote, you want to know what your job is? Job 28, verse 28. Job 28 verse 28 and unto man he said behold the fear of the Lord that is wisdom and to depart and to depart from evil is understanding yeah we're supposed to fear the Lord not man we're supposed to fear him whom after he hath killed can cast your soul, your body and soul into hell. I just paraphrase that, beg your pardon. What's the fear of man? How about the propaganda that's going on here in my country right now? About the biological weapon called the COVID-19 virus? I, 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 I make no secrets about that. Um, there are one too many coinky dinkies. Um, it's a biological weapon. I am totally convinced of it. Can I prove it? No. No. But we'll find out. And those of you who are lost and messing around and playing games and believe in this post fib heresy and all kinds of wicked stuff, yeah, you, you're going to get a chance to live. Uh, Live out your imaginary, uh, fictitious faith after the body of Christ is taken up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Now, this whole virus thing is real. It is real. People are getting sick. People have died. Okay? 
but it's indu uh, the Jesuit-controlled media are inducing panic, inducing fear. And as Brother Aaron Judge did a wonderful, just a wonderful video, uh, should we as Bible believers be afraid of the coronavirus? And then you look in his description, totally Brother Aaron Judge, totally Brother Aaron Judge. No. <laughs> yeah, I love that man. I love that man. I love that man. Today at work, um, every customer that came in, we were pretty busy. It was slow to start, but then we got busy, you know. Uh, every customer, when they left the door, I said to them, seek the Lord. Oh, you were telling people to seek the Lord at work, Brad? Oh, on the job? Oh, oh no. <laughs> Go to Acts chapter 4. <clears throat> Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Go there, of course. Okay. We're going to do a little reading here. Can you handle that? Hmm? Acts chapter 4. We are going to be reading verses 1. On to verse 31. Okay. Acts chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. And we will be reading on to verse 31. And as they spake unto the people, the priests, and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees, the religious rulers, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. <laughs> and they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Albeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. 5,000. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes, and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the mist, they asked, By what power or by what name have ye done this? <laughs> hey, Brad, where did you go to school? Hmm? Do you have credentials? I, I, who, who gave you the authority? Who gave you this authority to, to sit in front of a plastic camera and speak out of the King James Bible, the real Bible, huh? Were you properly trained in uh, homiletics? Hmm? <laughs> homiletics. <laughs> uh, uh, how do you come about your biblical exegesis? Not like I've ever run into that. <laughs> Check this out. Verse 8. Then the first Pope, Peter, uh, excuse me. <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, I, <laughs> okay, enough. Sorry. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, Notice that, filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay. Said unto them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, 
Notice who he's speaking to. Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. He's a Jew speaking unto the Jews. Okay? This is before Acts chapter 7 when the people of Israel officially, nationally, rejected the gospel. Okay? This is... This is the New Testament right here. Jesus Christ uh, died for sins according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay. This was the beginning of the New Testament or the Christian dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Okay. But see, it had to go to the Jew first. Okay. It was to the Jew first. Okay? It's very significant and important to remember that when you are reading from Acts chapter 1 on to Acts chapter 7. That's very significant. That's where all you care Catholics, you know, you charismatics, you heretics, that's where you guys screw it up because you're not dispensational. You don't rightly divide the word of truth. I have yet to meet one dispensational charismatic. And you know what? Probably never will. Just saying. Okay, let's continue from verse 9. If we this day be examined of the good deeds done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby men must be saved. And that is the name Jesus Christ, the name of our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? You sad Trinitarians, do you realize that you're pretty much Catholic? You know, um, I'm reading just for personal amusement before I go to bed every night, you know. Um, beg your pardon. I'm reading this just for pure amusement, okay? The theological vision of Jonathan Edwards, God's grand design, Sean Michael Lucas. Okay, I'm just, this is just, you know, something to read before I go to bed. Um, Jonathan Edwards used all the rhetoric of how to, of uh, Trinitarian rhetoric. Okay, he, he was a Trinitarian. Okay, and a lot of what uh, apparently um, Jonathan Edwards' theology, you can find in the Catechism, when it, especially about the Trinity, of course, because the Trinity is Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman Catholic. Okay? Just saying. There is no Trinity. Oh, there will be a Trinity on the earth in the book of Revelation. You know, we the body of Christ will long be gone after, you know, and all you fake Christians and all you uh, post-fibbers, uh, you, you're going to see your little satanic, fictitious twinity. Good luck. I, I just had to bring that up. Now, check this out. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, meaning they weren't, they didn't go, and here, let me use some terms that some of you will be more familiar with. 
they didn't have the credentials. They didn't, or they weren't trained by men. They didn't go through the hoops of like what these Sadducees and Pharisees guys went through. Okay? They didn't pay over $100,000 for a piece of paper to hang on their wall. That's what that means. Now, when they saw the boldness, note too, the boldness, brethren. The boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled, and they took knowledge of them. That they had been with Jesus. Have you ever wondered why, Christian, when you start witnessing to people, when you even drop the name Jesus Christ around some of these people, up around lost people especially, and have you ever noticed how antsy they get? How they don't want to hear it? Hmm? Have you noticed that by now? You know why that is? And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. See, you're saved, born again. You are sealed until the day of redemption. Our redemption is the catching away, being caught up. Okay? The Holy Ghost, the Lord, is that spirit, our Father, Jesus Christ. You have God the Father living in you, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? He's in you. The lost notice that. And those who are fake, who put their stock and trust in men, the traditions of men, okay, they notice that. See, they were, according to them, unlearned and ignorant, but yet they had been with Jesus. That's why. Brethren, now see, some, a lot of you already know that. Some of you might be a little confused about that. It's just the name of the game, especially the, uh, especially nowadays. See, okay. Let's continue. Verse fourteen, and beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. You gotta love that. Let's continue. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they confirmed, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do with these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. You see, brethren, when the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, moves through you, to speak something, to put out that track, to have total confidence, faith, and trust on Him, to uh, kind of cast away all fear of man, which bringeth a snare, ah, and put your trust on the Lord. People notice that, and. You know, when you speak something that the Lord gives you to speak, that truth that will come through you uh, by, you know, through the scripture, you know, you know, the Lord's using you to speak through the scriptures, you know, he's, you're his vessel, okay? People notice that. And when you speak the word of truth through the King James Bible, the real Bible, cuts them and they can do all they want to do but they can't deny it oh they can they can try but see this cuts them 
sharper than any two-edged sword, man. Let me see. Let's continue. Verse 17. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. <laughs> Christian, brother, sister, have you ever been threatened? You can't talk about your religion. You can't talk about Jesus Christ here. This is the inappropriate place to do so. You do that privately. And see, those who are spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit, those who love their church building systems, given to them by pagans, the Jesuits, okay? Can't, no, you see, you can't be... There's a time and a place for everything. No, you know, Paul in the markets never taught, you know, when he was making tents, he never, he never talked about Christ. I'm sure that wouldn't have been wise. And then again, it doesn't say that he, when he was a tent maker, that he said anything about uh, speaking about Christ when he was making tents. Have you ever heard any, I'm sure, I'm sure some of you have heard this before, right? Yeah. Someone who comes into a pizza place doesn't want to hear seek the Lord. Don't want to hear when you're talking with them, oh, praise the Lord. Yeah. They don't want to hear those things, right? And, you know, I, like I said, I did that with every customer, you know, who came in. Made the pizza, chit chat with them. They go out, and it's like, seek the Lord. Should have, should have seen some of the reactions I got today. <laughs> and see, in my profession, I don't have the time because it's in and out, in and out, you know. But those little moments of planting seeds, brethren, that's, uh, that's especially in these days, okay? Get it? Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Don't do it. You know, Brad, you can't do that. If you continue to do that, we're going to have to let you go. Because this isn't working out. Have you ever heard that one before? You need your job. Go ahead and quench the spirit, even though he's kicking you in the pants to say, oh, praise the Lord. Something simple. You know, you don't have to level them over the head with the scriptures, especially if you're at work. But every little Little chance you get, you take, especially nowadays. Especially nowadays. And yeah, there are parts, uh, there are incidences where casting your pearls before swine, I'll grant you that. But see, you let the Lord guide you in doing so. You'll do fine. Okay? Note the response here. Verse 19, but Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Tell me something, Christian. Hold your place here, and I, I uh, when I when I do this, 
I do what is called point of reference, okay? I use, uh, any of you who've watched any of my videos, you've already figured that out. I'm very big on point of reference, very big a point of reference. Go back now to Proverbs 29, verse 25, okay? Okay, now, good, keeping your hand there in Acts chapter 4, let's read 19 and 20 again. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God, to hearken unto you more than unto God judge ye, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 25, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Now look at verse 26. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Uh -huh. And oh, 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 yeah, we, of course we are. Look at verse 27. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Now, with that hanging in the air, go back to Job. Job, uh, qu uh, quoting, uh, coining Brother Brian's phrase, what's your job? Huh? Job 28, 28. And unto men he said, behold, the fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Man will threaten you that to take things away from you, your <laughs> livelihood, for talking, preaching, ministering, Jesus Christ on the job, or just outside your door. Now, I know you, my brethren, many of you are not afraid. <clears throat> I know that. But again, I know some of you are. Hey, 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 my brethren. Um, uh, how long are you going to be passive about it? Hmm? How long are you going to uh, just hang back? It's like, no, no. Uh, you, you feel that in your heart, you know? The burning. Hold your place here. Let's, uh, let's look at an Old Testament reference on that, okay? Uh, you know, brethren... The, a lot of the Old Testament is specifically for the Jewish people, but you know what? You can't skip over the Old Testament, brethren. <laughs> Things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through the scriptures, uh, might have comfort and hope. I just paraphrased that a little bit and butchered it. Beg your pardon. Okay, but you get the point. That's in Romans 15, by the way. <laughs> anyway, go to Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. Okay, holding your place in Acts. All right, like I said, I, I do point of reference. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 20. <clears throat> we will be reading verses 7. 
On to verse 10. Okay? Jeremiah 20, verses 7 on to verse 10. Go there. We read. Uh, incidentally, if you want to read the context on your own time, go right ahead. Jeremiah was arrested. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 7. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Every one mocketh me. Now, the Lord didn't deceive him. Jeremiah was feeling a little, woe is me. Okay, that's what's going on. Okay, let's continue. For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision daily. Oh, you tell me, brother. You look at me. Look at me. You look me right in the eye. You tell me if I had that one on you before, huh? Tell me that. Hi. Let's continue. Then I said, <laughs> then I said, I will not make mention of him. Nor speak any more in his name. Hi. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing. forbearing. I could not stay. Ooh. You're around people. Lost people who might be blaspheming the name of our Lord, our God, our Father, Jesus Christ. On the workplace or at the workplace. And you hear it and you don't say nothing. Shh. Because you don't want to lose your job, right? You don't you don't want to be put at any burden, huh? You might be around your friends, your family, your relatives. The Lord has given you the truth. You might know something in a specific situation. You might have relatives who profess to be Christians, but think that they're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. And they're talking about it. And there you are, knowing the truth. Of the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? You know you know about it. And you hear it, but you're like, uh, I don't want to rock the boat. <clears throat> I don't want to cause any strife or division within my family. I don't want to have that side of the family mad at me because I, I'm not afraid to speak the truth because I love them enough to warn them. So, you shh, keep quiet, right? Any of you ever gone through this before, huh? Huh? At one point in time, in every King James Bible-believing Christian who is truly safe and born again, you will go through it at least once, maybe twice, maybe a few times. The fear of man bringeth a snare, remember? Remember? Okay? But see, when you're truly saved and born again, not looking to put another notch in your belt, not waiting for people to shut up so you can speak true wisdom and show off. No, it's the Lord. 
speak up. Uh, hey, will you, hey, oh, you're not going to speak, huh? Huh? Yeah, okay. How about I, uh, how about I make it burn in you a little bit? Hmm? Where it makes you sick in your stomach to hear it. And you're not speaking yet? Oh, you're not speaking yet, huh? How about I make it burn a little hotter for you? Getting a headache sitting there. Your stomach's getting sick. You're getting a headache. Hmm. <sighs> Right? <clears throat> but his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and could not say, or I cannot stay, excuse me. Verse 10. For I heard the defaming of many. Fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watched for my halting, saying, Peradventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. Why don't we uh, keep reading a little bit here in Jeremiah, huh? Let's do that. Let's do that. How about we read to verse 13? Okay? Verse 11, 12, and 13. Now, okay? But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble. Ooh, Christian. Sooner or later, those who are your persecutors, they're going to stumble saying that you don't get it. You don't understand. You don't get it. You don't understand. You're ignorant. You're you're being immature. You're not thinking right. You need to grow up. Ever heard any of that? I But the Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one. Therefore my persecutors shall stumble and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. But, O Lord of hosts, that triest the righteous, and seest the reins and the heart, let me see the, thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I opened my cause. Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hands of the evildoers. Might have to wait a little while here. We're, we are going through some stuff. But you know what, Christian? Go back to Acts 8, 19 and 20. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Now, when Jeremiah was doing his speaking, he was warning the Jewish people of the coming catastrophe of Nebuchadnezzar. And everything that Jeremiah prophesied has come to pass. The time of Jacob's trouble has yet to come to pass, of course. That was a future prophecy yet to be fulfilled. But when it comes to the destruction of Jerusalem, and then when they went to Egypt, okay, <laughs> So that what he was warning them about came to pass at that time, dispensationally. Okay, there are still things within Jeremiah that have yet to come to pass, and it will. Okay, but the people knew that Jeremiah was the real deal. Why do you think they attacked him so much? Because he was saying things that they didn't want to hear. At a time when the enemy was at the gates and the people just wanted to continue as if it was, as we say, status quo. Everything is normal. Right? 
Let's continue in Acts chapter 4, at verse 21 now. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shewed. Now get this. Get this. Okay? Here's where we come in, brethren. Okay? Here's where we come in. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? Uh, A.V. Maritime Bible Believer, um, he's, that's Psalm 1, okay, or Psalm 2, uh, whatever, it, beg your pardon. Yeah, it's Psalm 2, beg your pardon. <laughs> but uh, go ahead and check out his uh, his rendition of the Psalms, okay? Why did the, why do the heathen rage, okay? That's Psalm 2, beg your pardon, okay? But I, I had to throw that in there, okay? Uh, I just lost my place. Okay, verse 25. Who by the mouth of thy servant David hast said, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Remember, Christ means anointed one. Okay? Christ means anointed one against his Christ. Okay, let's continue. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed. Okay, okay look at that in verse 27. Whom thou hast anointed, verse 26. The Lord and against his Christ. See, the Godhead is spirit soul, and body. God the Father is the soul. The body is Jesus Christ. The Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Okay? And these three are one. Okay? There are not three persons, which is a spirit, soul, and body. There are not three persons that make one God, that is insanity. That is blasphemy. And that, my friends, is paganism. Okay? Just had to throw that out there. Okay? Okay, again, look at these two verses and like that, okay? Verse 26. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel, were gathered together. Okay? For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. Check this out. And now, Lord... Behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders be that's and excuse me, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. The Jews required a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. The sign gifts, when you look in the book of Acts, whenever the sign gifts were being done, 
Jews were present somewhere within the vicinity there. Okay? The Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Okay? Jewish people need signs, even today. Okay? And the Greeks, Gentiles, seek after wisdom. Okay? That's very important to know. So, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Okay? Okay, now this was the beginning of the New Testament. But like I said, it is to the Jew first. They had to offer the gospel. You know, the gospel. They had to offer that. The um, kingdom of God. The spiritual kingdom. That's what I should have said. Excuse me, beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Okay. But they had to offer it onto the Jewish people first. And then in, in Acts chapter 7, nationally, they said, uh-uh. And then what happens? Then it goes to the Gentiles to make them jealous. Okay, so let's continue. <clears throat> and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Here's the point. Verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak Thy word. Boldness, brethren. Do you pray for boldness? Now, listen to me. Okay? I'm speaking from experience on this. Boldness is not being a putz about it. By cramming it down their throats. Or casting your pearls before swine. That's not what boldness is. When you're in the fire... Like what we read in Jeremiah, when you're hearing it and you're being quiet because the fear of man bringeth a snare. What what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of losing your job? Are you afraid of losing friends, family members? Are you afraid of your wife turning on you, your husband turning on you? What? And it's, it's not anything that you do out of arrogance. or and, and brethren, like I've said to you before in many videos, I, I have taken this book and boom, bashed over people over the head way too hard when you're supposed to give them little morsels before you give them the whole sandwich, see? Okay? And I have made that error before on many occasions where I've tried to force or force feed or cram the whole sandwich down their throat when they need little snippets, little crumbs at first. You know, Paul said, I have fed you with milk and not with meat because hitherto you were not able to bear it. Okay? Little increments at first. And I speak from experience. When you try to force feed them the whole sandwich, it could have the opposite effect. Okay? The boldness is when you're hearing it and the fear of man brings a snare upon you and you hold back. And you begin to trust or not, ne not necessarily trust. It's you value the wrong thing sometimes. Perfect example. You got a house, you got bills, you got a wife you got to provide for. And you're in a place where you are hearing people constantly blaspheme the name of the Lord. Telling dirty jokes. Acting provocatively. Whatever. Knowing that certain people who you work with are taking advantage of the owner. And the fool is willfully ignorant of it. Things like that. And you put more stock on those things because you're looking at it at the wrong perspective. Nine.
19 and 20 in, ver in Acts 4 again. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Brethren, if you haven't noticed, the times are getting worse every day. Literally. Literally. You would have to be, beg your pardon, you would have to be an utter idiot to not notice that, whoa, whoa, something's going on. You know what I've noticed too, brethren? See, here online, people are asking questions. People are looking. And then you have the false, uh, the uh, post-fibbers, the Jesuits, coming in with their false doctrines. Leading these people who are here online a lot are seeking genuinely and asking the right questions and getting all the wrong answers. from Jesuits who are pretending to be King James Bible believers, and they're nothing of the sort. But when it comes to people out there that I've been noticing, they're desensitized, it seems. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that? See, what Satan has done has made a mockery of the true faith on our Lord Jesus Christ and have turned it into a thing of merchandising, sappy, sissy, non-judgmental, false love. Uh, <laughs> love the sinner but hate the sin. Actually, it's uh, <laughs> it ought to be hate the sinner and love the sin. Because you know what, brethren, you real you do realize, um, if you if you really care about someone love someone, you tell them the truth, not like a putz, not like a jerk, no, you do it out of meekness. But brethren, okay, brethren, listen to me, okay, we have to remember, okay, again, what is our job as a Christian, you know? Job 28, 28. And under many said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? And, of course, once again, we, we look in Proverbs 25, or 29, 25, excuse me. Okay? The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. See, man, man can make you fear the things of man, the things of the world, because they're natural men. And they are being um, led on and influenced by devils. Okay, always remember Ephesians 6.12, by the way. Okay, if you can't memorize it, at least know where to go, brethren, okay? Brethren, we need to pray for boldness. Out there. It is, brethren, 
Now let's 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 be honest with one another. Okay, let's be honest with one another. It is a little bit more easier to be bold here on YouTube or on social media when you're sitting in your easy chair speaking to your laptop or a camera. Okay? It's not as easy as some will tell you, right? Okay, the fact that people will be able to see your face or hear your voice, we get all that. But it's a little bit easier than out there as far as boldness is concerned. Think about that. Let, let's be honest with each other, okay? See, because sooner or later, you, you do have to turn this off. Okay, and I, I'm not against this at all. I'm for it. It's great. You know, again, Brother Bob is going to be having a fellowship. Uh, I, you can find his channel, but, you know, I, but it, this is great. But there does come a time when you have to turn this off and you have to go out there, brethren, And you can't let the devil make you look on the things of this world that are falling apart rather than keeping your eyes upon Jesus and asking, praying for boldness to warn these people who are going to be left behind. You'll get spit at. That's gross, by the way. <laughs> um, you'll be threatened. You'll be humiliated. You'll be mocked. Okay? You'll be mocked. But what are you afraid of? Them or the Lord? Seriously, seriously, okay. Again, um, don't misunderstand me. I'm not this. You know, any any anybody can turn on a camera and start talking. Okay, yes. But when it comes to reading God's pure, perfect, given by inspiration word, the King James Bible, that's something different. You know. And, you know, like Brother Alexander Hartley, he, uh, he's reading out of the book of Isaiah. And he's say, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Brethren, those of you who do that, like Brother Alexander, Brother Allen, A.V. Maritime Bible Believer, okay? Brethren, keep at it. Don't quit. Who cares if you only got one view? Who cares? Who cares? Keep at it. Pray for boldness, brethren. Start praying for boldness. Not just here online, in front of camera, but when you're out there. But don't you care? Or do you take this, well, we're casting our pearls before swine, and yeah, you are, pretty much. But that doesn't absolve you from speaking. Okay, yes, the Holy Ghost will forbid you at times, yes. But when the Lord is making it burn in you, and those of you who are truly saved and born again, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The fear of man bringeth a snare. Whoso put it his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Start speaking. Okay? Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. I want. I gotta hit this. I gotta hit this with you. Okay? I got to hit this with you. 
Because brethren, First Corinthians chapter 16. First Corinthians chapter 16 verses 5 through 9. First Corinthians chapter 16 verses 5 through 9. Go there, of course. We read. This is Paul, obviously. Now I will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia, and it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey whithersoever I go. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. Look at verse 9. For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. There are many adversaries, but for a great door and effectual is open unto me. But yet there are many adversaries. Um, Paul went through that door, even though there were many adversaries. Okay? Paul went through that door. And don't you just sit there and be like, well, that's Paul. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. You ain't gonna get off that easy, buddy. Brother, sister, uh-uh. It don't work like that. Second Corinthians now, chapter 13. Second Corinthians chapter 13. We're gonna read this whole chapter. Okay? It's only 14 verses. Give me a break. Okay, let's go. Come on. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 14. The whole chapter. Okay, come on. We read. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I told you before and foretell you, as if I were present. The second time, and being absent now, I write to them which heretofore have sinned, and to all other, that if I come again, I will not spare. Paul's warning them. Yeah. Paul didn't want to have to be bold in the way he is speaking. But he's like, you know what, guys? If I come again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold back, because he loved them truly loved them. So he wasn't going to hold back on them. Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is not weak, but is mighty in you. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him. But we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Uh, look across your page. I, I did a whole video on this a little while ago. First uh, Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians, twelve. Uh, not a whole video, but I, um, when I confess my faults. <laughs> okay, look at this. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecution, persecutions in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. See, it's not us doing it, brethren. Verse 4 in uh, 2 Corinthians 13, For though he was crucified through weakness, 
yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you? Except ye be reprobates. Every once in a while, brethren, we do have to take a self-inventory. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. My name is Brad Paul Avenchine, and I confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Do you get it? Do you get it? Nod your head. Okay, let's continue. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear proved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak, and ye are strong, and this also we wish, even your perfection. Therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness. Now see that, where he says use sharpness? Look up at verse 2. I told you before and foretell you, as if I were present a second time. And being absent now, I write to them which heretofore have sinned, and to all other, that if I come again I will not spare. Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is not weak, but is mighty in you. And then you look down here, okay? Therefore, at verse 10, Therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness. See, he didn't want to use sharpness. Let's continue. According to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction. Okay? You get it? Paul wanted to edify these people, not to bring down, not for destruction. He didn't want to have to be sharp with these people. But he warned them that he will if he had to. Verse 11, Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with an holy kiss. All the saints salute you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost <laughs> be with you all. Amen. And these three are one. Right there in that verse. You gotta love that, huh? <laughs> See, we read this, okay, because being bold is not being sharp. What does it say here? Therefore, I write these things being absent. Less being present, I should use sharpness, okay? There is a place and the time to be sharp and being bold for your witness for the Lord Jesus Christ, absolutely. But you don't purposely go out of your way to be a jerk. That's not boldness. That's arrogance. That's flesh. Meekness is you getting out of the way and the Lord doing it through you. Because what does it say here? <coughs> In verse 3, since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. Now, go to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. See, brethren, there are some of you that are holding back. I know you are. I know you are. You don't have to do it here. 
do it out there. Whatever it is the Lord will have you to do. Yeah, I'm pushing this because, come on, these people are going to be left behind. And yeah, a lot of them don't want to hear it. But again, that doesn't absolve you from going out there and taking every chance the Lord, the Lord gives you. Why do you always, why do you think I always say, have a Bible on you? Have a Bible on you. Be instant in season, out of season. What do you, what? What are you waiting for? I know some of you are holding back. I know you are. I know you are. Trust the Lord. But well, you don't think, what? What? Come on. Whatever it is he will have you to do, do it. Galatians chapter 6, verses 6 on to verse 10. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. You do reap what you sow, Christian. You already figured that one out. We know that, of course, right? Yeah. Think about this. You're reading the King James Bible, the real Bible. You're studying this. You are giving the Lord a, a, a little bit of time every morning or whenever you can. Okay? You're not making excuses. I got I to gotta tell you, brethren, that's something that really chafes my buttocks when I hear people give excuses as why they don't read the Bible. And they fall back on, well, it's in my heart. Uh, it's supposed to be in your hand, and you're supposed to be reading it. I want to see you get back on the horse, so to speak. I want to see you going out there. I want to see and hear about you uh, witnessing to your family. I want to hear that. I want to see that in you. <laughs> because these <laughs> Christians who go to these church buildings, <laughs> they're part of the problem. Um, they are the problem. Brad, I go to a church building. Why? Why? You know it's not here sanctioned in the King James Bible, in the Pauline epistles especially, you know, the doctrines, the doctrine for us in the time of the Gentiles, this dispensation that we're in right now, okay? Which is coming to an end. Verse 9 and 10. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Are, are you looking at verse 10? 
As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Do good unto all men. Yeah. But especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Ephesians. Ah, uh, okay, let me see. What did I write there? Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. What was, what did I, uh, what was that that I have? Beg your pardon, brethren. Beg your pardon. Ah, never mind about that one. Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Oh, excuse me. That's what it is. I beg your pardon, brethren. <laughs> See, I wrote this down at work. Uh, so, uh, yeah, beg your pardon. <laughs> we are in Ephesians 5, verses 15 on to verse 21. Beg your pardon for that. I, I See, I couldn't read my own chicken scratch. <laughs> beg your pardon. Ephesians 5, verses 15 on to verse 21. Go there, of course. Let's read. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Remember that. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Redeeming the time, for the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Do you know what the will of the Lord is? That all men come to repentance and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. That we all know and love Him. God wants everyone to be saved. Not everybody is going to be saved. This isn't that hard to figure out. Okay, let's continue. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. Excess. Christian, listen to me. There ain't nothing wrong with drinking a glass of wine if you so choose. I, every once in a while, will drink a glass of red wine. Especially if I am having trouble sleeping or um, my mind's still awake, you know. Um, there's nothing wrong with drinking a glass of wine. You know, Timothy, uh, Paul, you know, told Timothy, you know, drink a little wine, you know, for thy uh, stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Personally, I think Timothy had a uh, problem with um, worry, you know. Actually, might have had some ulcers for all we know. I don't know, but just saying, okay. So I had to bring that up, just so you know. But it says here, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. And this, I love this, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Giving thanks always for all things, all things, unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll let you figure that one out for yourself. Submitting yourselves one to another in the... Paul never meant, said anything about fearing God. Uh, yeah, he did. Quite a few times, but 
Are you looking at that one? Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith. Uh, unreasonable and wicked men. Yeah, I see a whole lot of them here on YouTube and social media you also see them out there. Unreasonable and wicked. Like I said, you, you look around at uh, some videos here on uh, YouTube, you know, <laughs> people are asking questions. But like I said, outside your door, it, it seems to, pe people are kind of, foggy up here. No. And when you do get responses, it's because people are unreasonable and wicked telling you that you don't understand. It's like, no. <laughs> no. You're the one who doesn't get it. You know why I know that? Uh, because I have it written down for me. And I believe it. See, I don't have you, you don't have to remember it because it's written down. <laughs> See, that's why you always have a Bible on you. I have to mention this. I'm not going to name you. I'm not. I can't carry my Bible on me because I wear too tight a pants. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, brethren. Yeah. Always carry a Bible. Always have a Bible on you. Uh, my Bible is a big one. Get a smaller one. And brethren, listen to me, okay? I can't send things outside the country. Especially now with things that are being weird. Okay, uh, those of you in other nations, um, if people need smaller Bibles that they can carry, why don't you pick up that bill for yourself and help out the brethren? You, my countrymen in America, you, my countrymen, my American countrymen, you need a small King, uh, King James Bible to carry with you. Get a hold of me, I'll send you one. Okay, um, ask Vato about that kind of stuff. He'll tell you. You need a Bible, my countrymen, in America, a small one to carry with you. You don't have one? Let me know. I'll send you one. A little Holman, a little Holman compact one that you can fit in your back pocket. Okay? No excuses, brethren. No excuses. Seriously, try me. You need one? Come on. Let me know. Verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. 
and the Lord direct, direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. That's what we're doing right now, brethren. Anytime you want to come, Lord, right? <laughs> now, okay? You want to hit a little bit more exhortation here? Go back to the Old Testament. Jeremiah. Go back to Jeremiah. Now, dispensational, there's definitely dispensational things here with Jeremiah, okay? Um, out of the all the books of the Bible, Jeremiah is my favorite book in the Bible. My second favorite book is Romans, of course. But uh, Jeremiah is my absolute favorite book in the Bible. So, go to Jeremiah chapter 1, okay? Jeremiah chapter 1. All right. Uh, we will begin at verse 4, and we will read to verse 10 in Jeremiah. Go there, come on. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 on to verse 10. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then I said, Ah, oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. This is for instruction and in righteousness, brethren. Are you looking at that? Be not afraid of their faces. For I am. <laughs> Notice that? For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Christian, you're saved, you're born again, you are sealed until the day of redemption, you have the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, our God, living in you. Okay? You get it? Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. Now we are going to skip a little, okay, to verses 17 on to verse 19. On your own time, read the whole chapter, okay? But check this out. Verses 17 on to verse 19. For our instruction in righteousness, Christian, thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. Get a load of that. Get a load of that. See, when the, the fair man bringeth a snare, but whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. You start fearing the men rather than feeling fearing the Lord you get it let's continue for behold I have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar 
and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. Okay, this he's talking clearly, specifically unto the Jewish people in this whole chapter, of course. But, I mean, you, you, you get that from verses 1 on to verse 3. This is our instruction in righteousness, by the way. Okay, we need this right now. Verse 19. Okay, in this time of the Gentiles, which I was calling the Christian dispensation, in this is the time of the Gentiles. God is in you, and he ain't going anywhere until we are caught up, until we are, it says, we are sealed unto the day of redemption. We are looking for the blessed hope, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Verse 19, And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am, I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. The Lord is with you, Christian. You follow his lead. And let him do the talking. He will. He will. Come on. Come on, brother. Can, can you handle one more? Can you handle one more? Just, just a little one. Jeremiah 6. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Beg your pardon. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Come on. Come on, work with my fingers. Isaiah chapter 6. Then we'll be done. Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And it stood, and above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts and the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. Excuses. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You and I are going to be able to see him soon, Christian. Just saying. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am. Send me. Or do you want to play it safe and not trust the Lord? Do you want to be, yeah, it bothers me, but get your butt out of the way. Get your butt out of the way.
And he said, Go, and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. See ye indeed, but perceive not. Because is what he was going to be saying, people didn't want to hear. You see that in Jeremiah. He was talking about imminent destruction of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar. And the people didn't want to hear it. Hey, does that sound familiar? Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without man. And the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten, as a teal tree, and as an oak, whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed, speaking about the Jews, shall be the substance thereof. Proverbs 29, 25, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. And when it comes to lost men, lost man, lost Girls. Eh. Hmm? Ephesians six twelve. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Don't be afraid. Again, don't be afraid. Speak up. Don't be silent. We're going to be caught up soon, brethren. Very soon. And who knoweth who knoweth what the Lord will use you for while they still have the chance to hear the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the gospel that Paul preached, okay? They still have a chance to hear it and to repent and believe the gospel. And who knoweth whom will be saved by grace through faith? Well, there's still time for them. And it may cost you everything. It may. Do you think that the Lord will not provide for you? Anyway, brethren, that's it. I gotta go. I gotta get to bed. 
Um, right now, at this moment, I think that Brother Bob is doing his live stream. And I am not going to upload my video today. This was recorded on uh, March 20th, uh, Friday, March 20th, 2020. I'm not going to upload this video um, uh, while he's got his thing going on. Um, I, I think that'd be a little rude. But um, this was what the Lord gave me while I was at work. So, and I had to share this with you. I love you, brethren. And I will see you in the next video whenever or whatever that will be, okay?